Welcome back to Lake Math. Right now we're going to do absolute values. Basically the absolute value just makes whatever it is positive. So if we had a negative 3 inside our absolute value, it turns it into positive 3. So it made it positive. How did it make it positive? Uh, basically by multiplying by a negative. And on this one I've got 3. It's already positive. So it does nothing. It stays the same. It's 3. Now since it does two things, that means that if we're going to solve it, we have to solve it twice. Because when we look at our graph, it's going to look like this crazy V-shaped thing. And that is a solution, and that is a solution. So we have to solve it twice. It's not hard, it just means we have to do it twice. So on this one, what we're going to do our steps. We want to get the absolute value thing alone. And then we're going to do it twice. So right now my absolute value is already alone. So what I'm going to do is break this into two cases. The does nothing side and the does something side. So on the does nothing side I'm just going to get rid of my absolute value and write the equation without it. Now, for the does something side, it's going to do something in here, and like I said, the, the way that it changes the sign is basically by multiplying by a negative. So, I'm, since I've got my absolute value alone, I'm just going to change the sign over here instead of messing with it over here. So it's going to be like that and I just change the sign on the other side. So now I need to solve this twice. So I will subtract 8, and subtract 8, and subtract 8, and subtract 8. So x is 4, or negative 20. We get two answers because our graph looks like that. Because this either does something or it does nothing. So we end up with two answers. So those are my answers. I get two of them. Now, in this case, I've got to do something to get my absolute value alone before I can solve it. So you can just treat it like this is just one big variable, and you're going to do the same thing you would to get the variable by itself. So first, do the add subtract stuff. Second, do the multiply divide stuff. In this case, I don't even have multiply divide stuff. So I'll subtract 8 from both sides. This all comes down. Negative 8 and 3, I get negative 5. And now I've got to break this into two cases. So I'm going to have the does nothing side. B minus 3 is negative 5. And I'm going to have the does something side. So I'm just going to change the sign on this side. So B minus 3 is 5. And now I need to add 3 here, 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 and here. So over here, B is negative 2. And over here, B is 8. So you get two answers. Again, we should always have two answers. All right, now in this case, I've got something in front of my absolute value here. I've got to get the absolute value alone before I can break it into the two cases. So to get rid of it, I'm going to divide, because this is this times that. So to do the opposite, I'm going to divide and divide. So these cancel. This comes down. My negatives cancel. 10 divided by 2 is just 5. Now I'll break it into the two cases. So I've got 5y minus 1. And this will be my do nothing case, so I'll just carry the 5 down. And my does something case, I'll have to change the sign there. All 
All right. So now in this case, what I need to do is I'm going to have to add here and here and here and here. So these cancel. I get 5y equals 6. And over here, these are gone. So I get 5y equals negative 5 and 4 is negative 4. And now I need to divide everything by 5. So I'm going to get y equals, oops, mark it up my clipboard. And they're all fractions. They didn't cleanly divide. So it's going to be either this 6 fifths or this negative 4 fifths. Now, sometimes in the absolute value section, they're going to ask you to evaluate. So it says evaluate it if x equals negative 4. So when you're evaluating, just use parentheses, stick it in there. So this is going to be, and I'm putting this negative 4 in instead of x. So right here, the parentheses don't matter, but like down there it would. So negative 4 and negative 8, you just add them up, you get negative 12. Uh, when I do the absolute value section, it really makes sense why I draw my ones all like this. If I was trying to tell you that it's the absolute value of 1L, this makes a lot more sense than that. Anyway, it's negative, so it undoes the negative, it's positive 12. Now down here I've got a little bit more stuff going on. I'm still just going to put the negative 4 where the x is. Parentheses. Always use parentheses when you're plugging stuff in. It's just a good habit. Alright, so first I need to do the stuff inside the absolute value. You, you treat the absolute value like parentheses. So I've got the outside stays the same. Negative 12 plus 8 minus 4. Now this negative 12 plus 8 is going to be negative 4. So I've got negative 2, negative 4, minus 4. So this becomes positive 4. Positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 minus 4 negative 12.